I wanted it to be the best ever. Well, I don't know. <laughs> Maybe I'm exaggerating. So it wasn't going to be the best ever, but I wanted it to be somewhat memorable. So I asked a few people, and they gave me, they gave me some advice. And they said, well, it's good to tell a joke, give some advice from your own legal experience, and then congratulate the graduates. Now, I was in an election back in 2002. So I ran for judge and gave a lot of speeches. And so I realized that humor can be important. That it can be helpful when you give a speech. And I thought, well, this might be a good audience for a lawyer joke. But I learned from experience not to tell lawyer jokes. I found that the lawyers in the audience don't think they're very funny. And the non-lawyers don't think they're jokes. <laughs> so that's it for no lawyer jokes, which brings me to the advice based on personal experience. So I want to tell you a little story. Is this being taped, by the way? There's a particular word in my story that I have to be careful about using. And it might be. Somebody might be recording this. All right, well, I'll we'll sanitize it a bit. So my first job in the legal profession was as a research attorney with the Court of Appeal in Sacramento. It's interesting because I'll digress a little bit, and I have to be mindful of the time. So, uh, Dean, just, you know, tell me I'm going too long when I'm going too long. No? Okay. So, um, so when I left law school, I thought I wanted to work for the ACLU. That was my goal. And I had a buddy of mine that I played basketball with at the uh, University of San Francisco. His name was Marty Jenkins. He was the, he played football with the Seattle Seahawks. And then I think he was slightly injured, so he decided to, uh, he decided to go to law school. And he and I used to uh, really um, battle on the basketball court, so we became close friends. He's a black guy. We became close friends, and he was a year ahead of me. And he went to the Alameda County DA's office, which is considered the best DA's office in the, certainly in the state. Earl Warren was the head of the DA's office. Kamala Harris was in that office. Uh, just some really stellar people. It's a very, very well-run office. So he went to the Alameda County DA's office, and Two weeks ago, he was confirmed to the California Supreme Court. So he's a likely speaker here, because I can twist his arm and get him here. I can promise you. That's another committee. <laughs> <laughs> Marty Jenkins. So, um, so I, he said, well, come to the Alameda County DA's office. I got you a job. And so I interviewed with the people. And I can remember interviewing and saying, you know, I'm just not conservative enough to be a prosecutor. And I declined the position, and so I took another position as a research attorney, which is kind of a way of punting uh, on the question of what do you want to do with the rest of your legal career. Because as a research attorney, you're basically working for appellate court judges and doing research and writing their opinions and so on. So my first job at the, re my first job at the Court of Appeal as a research attorney uh, was... Um, or my first assignment, was a case involving a claim that a search of a person was a bad search in violation of the Fourth Amendment. And I can remember going in and talking to my judge, and I was assigned this judge, and he was a very intimidating guy. He had got shot out of a plane during World War II, so he had a gash on his forehead, half an inch deep and about two inches long. And he was very conservative. I realized how conservative he was when he gave me a ride in his pickup truck with the gun racks on the back. Okay. So this was a conservative guy. So I, he gave me the briefs, he explained the case, went and did some research, and I came back a day later, I said, Judge, looks like it was a bad search. Looks like the search was in violation of the Fourth Amendment. We're going to have to suppress the evidence. The only evidence in the case was the drugs that was found on this person who was then prosecuted for possession of drugs. I said, Judge, it looks like we're going to have to reverse this conviction. He looks at me and he says, I've never reversed a conviction. I said, okay. And he said, so what I'm trying to tell you is go back and do some more research. Go back and look at federal cases. I said, okay. 
I'm a wet behind the ears research attorney. I go back, I look at federal cases. I come back a day or two later, I say, Judge, I looked at the federal cases. I've now looked at all the California cases. It was a bad search. It, it's a violation of the Fourth Amendment. He says, go look at the out-of-state cases. I said, where are the out-of-state cases? This is a long time. He says, well, we have a part of this big library, Library and Courts building in Sacramento. We have a part of the library where we store the out-of-state cases. So go look at those out-of-state cases. So I feel like I was the only person in the halls of all those out-of-state cases in like 15 years. The dust and the, the, the smell and, I mean, I was in areas of that library that nobody had been in for years. And I'm looking for, it's my first assignment, okay? So I'm looking for that case that would be helpful to the judge who's telling me, don't reverse this case. Finally, after researching, I go back to the judge. I've spent a week on this single little issue of the Fourth Amendment, search of a person. I said to him, I said, Judge, sitting across his desk from him, and we're both in chairs. I said, Judge, it's the Constitution. It's the Fourth Amendment Constitution to the Constitution we're talking about. And he looks at me, and he gives me one of these fingers, and I lean over, and he leans over, and he whispers to me, and he says, Brian, screw the Constitution. But the verb he used was, began with an F, okay? Which, because we're being recorded, I'm not repeating. <laughs> and I said, whoa, I missed that class in law school. <laughs> and then he said, he calmed down a little bit, and then he said, we'll reverse the conviction. And he said, the reason why I used the language I did, colorful language that I did, was because of the frustration he and both his liberal and conservative colleagues were feeling on the Court of Appeal at the time. Um, and he explained, and this was a long time ago, 1982, 1981, uh, 1982, and the Chief Justice of the California Supreme Court was a woman by the name of Rose Byrd. Some of you in the audience may remember her, Rose Byrd. Okay. She, her, her views on the death penalty were well known. She was morally opposed to the death penalty which is permissible. However, at her confirmation hearings, at her confirmation hearing, she was questioned about it, and she, um, she was asked, we know what your views of the death penalty are, and you're entitled to those views, uh, but we have to be certain that you'll adhere to the rule of law, that despite your personal preferences about the law, you'll uphold the law whether it has to do with the death penalty or any other law in the state of California. That's what we require of our lawyers. That's what we require of our judges, that they adhere to the rule of law, that decisions aren't made based on your own personal views of what the law should be. Uh, decisions aren't made on the color of, uh, based on the color of somebody's skin or a person's gender or sexual orientation, that they're based on the law. And he said, uh, after three or four years of her being on the bench and voting to reverse death penalty cases in 61 out of 61 cases, he said, we're frustrated at the Court of Appeal and at the trial court level uh, because she doesn't seem to have the ability to follow the law. So, and she was eventually voted out of office. Now, just to explain what it means briefly, when someone, when, when a death penalty case gets reversed, it means that a judge like myself sitting in the Superior Court is told one day a case has been reversed. It took eight months to try this case. Uh, you weren't the trial judge because this case was decided 13 years ago or so. Uh, the time between a conviction in that kind of case and the first appeal is now 18 years, but at the time it was shorter. And all of a sudden you're being told you have to find the time to try this case, even though you may have multiple other cases. So it's a very big disruption in terms of the administration of justice. Um, and in some of the cases, there's no question the reversal should have occurred uh, because of issues. Uh, but, but that was his frustration. That prompted him to make the statement that he did. So the rule of law is important. Am I going on too long? I, mean, I, should, point, I should look at Dean Pooler. Are you with me still? I don't want to lose you. Yes, we are. Okay. <laughs> I don't want to lose you. So. 
so decisions have to be made by judges based on the law, not based on social class, not based on wealth, not based on discrimination against the racial or religious group. And even though you might have a particular empathy or sympathy uh, for somebody in front of you as a judge or for a particular client because of really characteristics that are in, in many ways oftentimes meaningless in terms of how the law should be applied. Uh, and, and that's the case. So if you have if you have a black defendant charged with a particular crime and a white defendant charged with the same crime and their circumstances are similar, they should get exactly the same sentence. And that's what the rule of law means. And it's important to adhere to that, both as lawyers and as judges. So, well, so I, that was a long way of saying, I have some advice for you. The advice is, don't use the F word in communicating with colleagues and workmates because some wet behind the ears attorney 40 years later, it might be quoting you at a commencement address. So, now, I can quote this judge because this judge passed 20 years ago. So I feel safe that if there's a video here, he's never going to see it. <laughs> and don't get caught up trying to please a client or a judge, government official, if it means misrepresenting the law, misrepresenting the 